like you're doing the snow on the mountains. It's the same way that you do the snow on the mountains. Uh, that's it. Now, bring a bit into the shadowed area. You notice I'm just putting this in really dark at the moment because obviously light's coming from up here, left to right. So it won't be very bright, be quite dark. So I start off really dark. And then what I do is I just put a bit more white to that same colour, brighten it up a tiny bit. And then just here and there, touch some of that over the surface. And see how that's just a little bit brighter, just enough to stand out. Something about like that. Keep that edge more or less silhouette in there. Love working with a knife like this. Now, just as a a twist, I'm gonna grab a bit of a dark black and just in there, I'm gonna put a little fissure, a little crack in the rock, just in there. Again, it's another little spot where you could put a bush on on a tree. That's what I'll probably do. Now, wipe the knife off. I'm going to get a one inch brush. Just a normal one inch brush. Now, with that, I'm going to use sap green in with a lavender. See that same lavender colour? Sap greening with it. Now, just on here, I want to have a hue of green before I highlight. But I also wanted the lavender hue, that's why I did it first with the lavender. Now, I can just go back in with this green and just give it a bit of a green hue, like you would get in the forest, in the rainforest. When it's close to tea, that is. When it's shrouded in the mist like this, it can be just that straight lavender colour. Get washed out as the green as it goes further away from me. Yeah. That's good. And as you go away from you, it actually looks less and less green. So I'll put a bit of green on the close up areas and then just back in there and tap a little bit of that greeny colour just in there. Not a lot, just a tiny bit. And I'll use a clean brush. Add a bit of white on it, which is great. It's the misty colour. And then I can just tap that gently. See that? So that it's not solid white, it's still misty. Same again, I'm going to get a bit of green on this brush. Just changes that hue. I've been talking to Hugh a lot today, haven't I? <laughs> right, I'm just gonna put a little tree star there. Just there. My pet, my little stippling brush in my little baby this. I've worn it off, worn it out that much that it's really short. And for stippling, you're always better off with a short bristle on your brush because it's more rigid and it do not bend and flex as much. Tap that in in the centre. Got to be brave for this. This is your bravery test. slightly you know got a little lean to and a little lean to it just in there the same little honey down leaves the 
It's got some lovely shape of phone to it. It really has. And it stands out now, you see, from the background. It really stands out nice. Little hang it downs on that side as well. this time when I get that ridge it's so that I can get see these edge leaves you don't want to just look solid like that you want it to look like there's individual leaves that you can see in there because you're getting closer now something like so and then the same colour in fact I might actually mix a bit more of that up crimson blue black and brown. All the good dark colours. And then a bit of sap green. And then up in here, another bravery test for us. We've got a little bush just sitting out there. I'm going to put some branches down from this and something underneath it for it to sit on or make sense of it then. You want these darks though because the contrast really works. I'm going to highlight them with a lighter green over the top but even so it wants to be good and dark. Now let's get brave. Push everything way way back. You need to do this to give yourself the effect that you're looking down on the canopy. So you need to be brave for this, you really do. When you show, you, show me some bottle and just go for it. Maybe a little bit of that coming in there. sap green with that. I want these to be exactly the same. See like they're hanging down? I want these to be the same but they'll be hanging that way. And then I've got a couple of branches that I'm going to come out here. I haven't going to kill that, I'm just going to push it back and sit it back in the background by doing this. I'm going to have that a bit more solid up there. sense of these now so I'm just going to use a, a fan brush we've got this dark brown colour with the thinners in here mix that both sides see how sharp that is very sharp edge and then just up in here I'm just going to pull want a bit more of the brown with that Quite fat at the base. There. Nice. Just going to use this brown, tiny bit of the lavender with it, so it's good and dark. And then one side, just one side, I'm going to pull through the light colour. So you've got dark brown on that side. And then 
you've got the lighter colour on that side. I'll just show you. You've got dark, and then you've got the light on that side. It wants to be sharp like a chiseled edge. And we know the light's coming from right to left. So just on this tree, she wants to come down that edge and highlight that edge. Putting a, a little highlight in it, just on that side. There, and then behind that, I just want to jump it, blend back. So you've got the shadowed side, and then you've got the highlighted side. Now I know that with this tree, I'm wanting to create the illusion. There's a lot of plants growing on it. So what you do, I'm just going to start out here. I'll have a couple of little hanging down plants just there. And then I just want to actually start on the tree like so and indicate some little, just loads of little plants dangling down. In the rainforest, they find little crevices on the trees with these plants, little ferns and stuff. And I just want to uh, put a bit of them in, using the dark there and the sap green. So the dark colours mixed along with the sap green. So the sap green gives it a bit of a, of a green hue, making it look like there's some plants growing on there darker underneath so there's something to contrast against. There. And these little ones go right down to the bottom. Get more of the green. There. And they're all growing, like I say, up the tree. What we're gonna do now, we're just gonna use a, a liner brush. Might need a bit more thinner. Just put a little bit thinner out there. So again, I want to mix that light brown and midnight black. Bit of black. They're really thin. Thin like ink. I'll put my palette down so I can use my hand to rest. So that just up in here, obviously, oh, I need to make that go a bit sharp. Up in here, we've got some branches coming off this tree. Just down there. Start at the bottom now and work my way up. I want this to be quite, quite a decent sized limb. A few branches just holding them up. I need a bit more of a lad in the lips for that. That's better. in there. You've got to have something to hold these up. You were wondering why these leaves and stuff were floating in mid-air. It's because you come back afterwards and highlight and put these uh, branches in. There, one in there. A few little branches coming off of it as well. Same up there, let's uh, bring a branch right through. Let's 
See them again under there. Just want to put a couple of indications of some branches showing through. Now you're starting to get a bit of structure to your tree, you see. That's why I was saying don't worry about it earlier. You really shouldn't worry about it at the early stages because you've got to envisage what you're going to be doing at the final stages. That'll blend down there nicely. Good. Then I want to have the lovely highlights. That's it because that's creating a bit of shadow, you see. Now, just from that brush that I used for the little bushes on the side of the tree, I'm just clean that up. That's good. Now we're going to just go down and do these the same way that we've just done. Just put some of the branches in first. Just in the top area that you can just see. And then pull down from that. Thicker at the bottom, thinner at the top. Keep getting a fresh load of pain. actually put a few little branches on this as well so I'll go back to my little filbert brush push get a ridge and then just now and again like there on that branch just put a few little indications of some leaves reload and I'm going to put one just in this area here which will actually look really nice against all that lovely mist that's in the background and then come from here. I want it to get thin on the edge. Little thin sticks and twigs on that. Maybe, you know, so I like to go backwards and forwards. A little bit of something just on that bar. Nice. Now, I'm going to move over. Play on this tree. So I'm just going to first of all the same thing again. Put a few little sticks and twigs indications up in there. You'll have something to hold all this up. And then now a little trunk for this one. I have some twists and stuff in it. It's just living out on this rock. It's managed to grab a hold of a little bit of the uh, soil just on the top of there. It's managed to get its roots in. Give it a little bonsai effect as well on base. You get a lot of them in rainforests. Where they've got a right nice little fat base. And they'll have all the roots and stuff showing through. There, just down to that rock. Nice. Get it sharp now for these parts. Just going to come up in there and put some little branches in. Something like that. Nice. Again, we've got one last one to have a go at. This one down here. So I'll just pull a few little bits of stuff up there. See how I've made that nice and dark? 
because that's in shadow you see so it, over here I've used a liquid white mixed it with it a bit and it gives you a highlight instantly down there it won't even have a highlight because I thought all this would put it in shadow right I'll put that brush down and onto the highlighting now this is the fun part in fact sorry there's a few bits here that I need to put a few more branches on there I like to have the detail of the branches in there I think it, it really pays dividends it looks great and it look, makes the trees look deep nice one now a little one inch brush cadmium yellow sap green let's try that I might actually put a tiny bit thinner with the pen yeah what it does it will just help it to stick a tiny bit whoop there's not enough there I'll pour a bit on there so it wants to be thin again like ink Uh, there we go. Pulling through that then, you'll mix the oil paint with the thinners. A, bit, a tiny bit of yellow ochre as well. And maybe a bit of this dark colour. See what that does. Yeah, that's lovely. Tap. And then you push and get a ridge of paint. And that lives on the top edges of them bristles. Now, Start off on the right hand side of the tree. See that just there? How lovely it sticks up there. Now you see how I've gone a bit further over with that? It's so easy to do when your bristles like do the opposite of what you want them to do. Should I put a bit more dark in? Just where that is. And it's sorted. So again, I'm going to open bristles up a bit more this time. There's a, there's a little bristle on end that's not working for me there, so I'm going to change the brush. Right, let's try again. See what I mean about the way you work the brush bristles? Now, just on that edge, where it was before, look how neat it's going to be now. There, double highlights. Same up in there, I want a few highlights. You have to use a lot of pen for this. Tiny bit of yellow ochre, a bit of sap green, a bit of the dark again. You're going to have to constantly keep mixing up colour for this. Because you're going to use a lot of pen there. Now don't kill the dark shadows underneath. See them shadows underneath? Because when you leave them shadows, you can put a highlight in and look, it'll stand out. If you kill that dark, it won't stand out at all. Leave them more or less dark on the back edge. There. Tap, push, get another ridge. When you're working with these little ridges of paint, guys, look at that. It gives you some lovely layering in your trees and depth. It's a really nice way to do it. I do this sometimes and I'll actually go back to it with a liner brush and paint a few little individuals that you can see as well. Over the trunk there. A few little highlights out on there. You notice two or three taps though and I'm going to reload my brush again. That's how often you really have to do it. Because otherwise you start mud mixing because you're, you're painting without any paint on the, bris on the bristles of your brush and you should never, never do that. I'm going to leave that dark, maybe just a tiny bit of highlight on it, smidgen, yeah that's it, but I want it predominantly dark. Now again, just come down, give me a bit, a bit more yellow ochre in with this. Push, get a ridge. Like the change the twang of the colour. Bit more yellow walker. Yeah. 
keep changing that colour tone. All trees that you see out there, they'll all be different shades, different colours. Just on the right hand side, because again, remember the sunlight's coming from right to left, down this way. Do little highlights there, don't highlight that back edge. getting lit up a bit. Just on edges there is where it's going to get lit up. You can even put a tiny bit of cad yellow to that just to brighten it a tiny bit. Nice. Just a touch of colour on that back there. And then I'm going to move over and have a go with this one. Again I'm going to put it to cadmium yellow tones. Notice how we just pull that paint out and then start tapping at the bottom and then you've got all that paint to work with then. So I want that dark, so I'll start up here. It's on the right hand side mainly. 